Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. Elder Law Attorney with the Law Office of Amy B. Van Fossen joins us today on Helping Seniors TV for a talk about trusts and how they really can help you in your estate planning. I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors of Brevard. Welcome to Helping Seniors TV on behalf of our president and founder, Joe Steckler, and our entire team. Uh, so glad to have you with today. I think you're going to really find a lot of value in today's program and the topics we're going to talk about because the topic really today is uh, all about trust and uh, we're going to start off at a 30,000 foot overview level because if you're like me you've heard the word trust and you it just conjures up for me anyway it conjures up somebody with like ridiculous amounts of assets they're trying to figure out how to structure everything the right way and does it really have much to do with the average person and uh, our, our person that's gonna be helping lead us through this conversation today uh, has really said, listen, if you have any kind of property, this is probably a good idea, and so we should have a real good uh, explanation and a good starting point so that we can leave this program with a better understanding. As you know, our goal here at Helping Seniors of Brevard, we uh, often kind of like half jokingly say, this is about getting your ducks in a row but what we really want to do, as Joe Steckler has talked about, literally from the day he founded uh, Helping Seniors of Brevard, is we want to create a, a place where you can develop your own aging plan. So you can look at your own particular circumstances, the things you want to accomplish as years come by, and then let's make that happen. And so uh, what a great opportunity is to have this conversation today. We have uh, Tyler Runty with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen. Um, you guys are uh, elder law attorneys, and this is what you do day in and day out. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And yes, this is what we do all day, every day. <laughs> Estate planning, that's where it is. You know, I, I, as I was saying at the beginning of the show, I hear this word trust. And, you know, I jokingly talk, I don't know if you remember or heard of the TV show Beverly Hillbillies, and they talk about, you know, they move to Beverly, swimming pools, movie stars. And that's typically who we think. You know, people, when they talk about estate planning and they talk about trust, you're thinking about people who are like very wealthy. But as you were uh, schooling me just before the cameras were rolling, this really applies to just if you own anything, this this now starts to apply to you, right? It does. So um, I think a common misconception is that you have to have a lot of money mm -hmm. or you have to have a lot of assets, several bank accounts or pieces of property mm -hmm. for a trust to apply to you. And that's not the case at all. Um, a trust is really a valuable tool if you have anything. If mm -hmm. you have a bank account holding ten dollars um, it can be wow. it can be a valuable tool um, so i think that that's becoming more and more common people are are realizing this because mm -hmm. it's being talked about more but i think you know several years ago if you heard the word trust your mind automatically went to well i'm not a multimillionaire, so that doesn't apply right. to me so i guess the question even thinking about that is then you know if you even get a concept of a trust which i'm going to come back and i want to ask you to just help help me or help our viewers if they're not familiar with the terminology just so we understand what a trust is but then the you know it's like once you get past that you have all these other terms that go with it is it revocable is it irrevocable all these complicated words i know you know how to parse it but help us get get a sense of it right so that's why we're here yeah. we're here to help because it's not it certainly isn't common sense um, and we've been educated to know what those terms are mm -hmm. to help you along this path to make it as simple as mm -hmm. possible. Um, we actually have fun doing this. So, <laughs> so people, people can come to us um, and feel comfortable and it doesn't have to be yeah. this scary sort of thing. Um, but certainly, so a trust is basically a, a document that creates a vehicle mm -hmm. for your assets to be placed in um, with language on how that should be distributed when you pass away. Okay. So you have a trustee of the trust. Usually uh, the trustee while you're living would be yourself. So you are the trustee of your trust. Um, and then you name a successor. So when you pass away, that person is in charge of distributing your assets as you wish. Mm -hmm. um, you are the grantor, as we call it. So the creator of the trust. And it holds your assets. So it's, it's really... Um, 
just a vehicle that transfers property when you pass away. Okay. Well, because that was where I wanted us to start was to have you help me understand, like, if somebody, you know, if, uh, maybe you have your house in your name or your, your house is in your name and your spouse's name, or then you have a bank account held a certain way, or maybe you have, you know, maybe you have some stocks someplace or something like that. Are those items that go into a trust? Yes, absolutely. So um, kind of a breakdown of the way it would look if you came into our mm -hmm. office, we, we would talk to you about what assets do you have? Mm -hmm. Do you have bank accounts? Do you have stocks? Do you have real property? Do you have a rental property? Oh. Um, what does your financial picture look like? And then after the document is created and the trust is signed, um, which we can get into some of the um, mm -hmm. formalities of that, but um, once the document is signed, then the second part is retitling your assets to the trust name. Okay. So making sure that everything is moved from either your name as an individual mm -hmm. into your tr individual trust or husband and wife into your husband and wife marital tr joint trust. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a huge part of this is making sure that your assets are titled correctly. Okay. So I guess maybe even to back it up one more step. So there would be obviously some expense to setting up a trust and then putting the things in there. Why would, why would we want to take that step? So uh, obviously we understand generally that it's to help us in estate planning and things like that. But if you sit down with somebody say, well, I understand you've got this piece of property here, you've got this rental house here, and maybe you have this bank account over here. Here's why we should put this into a trust. How do you lead somebody just generally through, here's the advantage for you right. of doing that? So one of the big advantages of having a trust is avoiding probate. Okay. So probate when you pass away is the court's intervention or the court administered process mm -hmm. of transferring someone's assets. Okay. So the court gets involved in that. The court um, appoints a personal representative, someone in charge of making all of those distributions. The beauty of a trust is that you name a successor trustee to handle all of that without the court getting involved. So that's really the big difference. The court doesn't have to get involved with a trust. Ah. So you avoid probate. I would say that's one of the number one reasons why trusts are so favorable is they can avoid pro they would avoid probate, um, and then a, a few other reasons. So your trust can be as specific as you want it. There can be very detailed instructions on mm -hmm. how you want your assets to pass when you're gone. Um, also, it does plan for incapacity. So mm -hmm. your trust would say something along the lines of, if I uh, was to become incapacitated, this is who I want to take over my mm -hmm. trust assets while I'm living even. Okay. So um, it's an incapacitation planning tool. Um, another big thing is that when someone's estate goes through probate when mm -hmm. they pass away, um, that's a public public thing. So but that, right. that's a public thing. So. Um, documents get put in the public record. Um, when you have a trust, it's all very private. It, it never, no one ever knows about it. Ah. So that's another um, benefit to having a trust. So, so I guess already what you're explaining to me is like there's a lot, because as I understand a little bit, I understand about probate is, number one, that can be very costly, right? Because there's fees and different things and then you have court intervention so it's also a lot of time involved in that, right? Absolutely. So um, the, the two big headaches with probate are, one, the time it takes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be a very lengthy process where mm -hmm. kind of everything's frozen, during, your assets are frozen during right. that time, um, and then also the cost. So yeah. as you kind of mentioned before, there's the upfront cost of creating an estate plan that may include a trust, mm -hmm. um, but that cost of not having that and going through probate is gonna be higher on the back end. You know, the little bit that I keep learning as, as, as we dig deeper into this developing your aging plan stuff is that, boy, it sure is less costly to figure this stuff out in advance. So being proactive rather than reactive. And another thing that you, you brought up that I hadn't really thought about but when you said about this thing about incapacity, um, we were in a session, an educational session, uh, and, and Nancy Deerdorf, who was our operations director, she brought up the thing that she, most people say, well, like, you know, I know people have strokes, but it's not going to happen to me, or, you know, different things like that, and how we don't think of those. But when you said incapacitated, I've heard, um, I remember talking with uh, one of the attorneys in, in Amy's office who said, Gary, you, I have so often met people and families that I wish I could have met 30 days before this happened because we'd have so many more options 
to help guide them through this than we are left with because that planning wasn't there. Right, absolutely. With that, I think that's what we harp most on mm -hmm. in our line of work is just being prepared. Um, you know, estate planning can be kind of a scary thing. I think yeah. people, you know, maybe don't want to think about sure. it because it's kind of a, a you know, talking about death and mm -hmm. what do I do when I, you know, I'm gone and my loved ones that I'm leaving behind, people might not want to address those thoughts, but I can tell you that when pe clients leave our office, the weight that is lifted off of them, yeah. and just the feeling, okay, it's complete, it's done, I've, I've got something, um, it's, it's a great feeling and they, they tell us that all the time. So I think that just being prepared and taking that step, th that little nudge of, Okay, give our office a call or call it in, a, in you know an attorney that can help you, um, just to get your 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 documents prepared. And it can always, as we're talking here about the revocable trust, mm -hmm. um, it can always be changed. So that's the that's the great thing about it. So even if you leave thinking, um, you know, most people are, oh great, I got that done. I'm so glad the weight's lifted off. I'm prepared. If something happens to me, I'm okay. Um, and then tip five years goes by and you decide you want to change it, that's fine. You would just change it, we just amend it. So that was a question I was gonna say, because I have, I, the little bit I know, I've heard revocable trust and irrevocable trust. And obviously you would be the expert that would, would help look at somebody's situation and guide them correctly. But what, is there a different, what is, why would you choose or how do you choose or how do you start to look at those as tools? So a, a revocable trust can be changed throughout your life. So mm -hmm. it can be amended as many times as okay. you want, um, whether it be your beneficiaries or your, your successor trustee or mm -hmm. specific instructions that you include in there, all mm -hmm. of that can be changed. So, and as we progress through life, things do change. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have a, a three and a five year old. Mm -hmm. um, my estate plan while I have young kids mm -hmm. is going to look different than when they're, you know, 25 right. and 28 or 25 and 27. Um, so all of that can be changed, which that's, that's a great thing about a revocable mm -hmm. trust. An irrevocable trust, on the other hand, can't be changed. Okay. So once that is signed, it is that way. Um, and irrevocable trusts are typically used for um, when there's a disabled person, for instance, a supplemental needs trust, those are oftentimes irrevocable, um, or Medicaid planning. So mm -hmm. those are kind of some more, more detailed, specific uses for irrevocable trust. But the big difference between revocable and irrevocable is revocable can be changed and irrevocable cannot. Okay, so like when you have this idea, I'm gonna set up a trust, because that makes sense for some of the reasons we talked about it, would solve this question about all the expense and time of probate and it would probably help uh you know help with a, a path if if i became incapacitated or something like that so if somebody says that what are all the tools that you need to be able to help somebody put that together what are the things that you need to know uh, from the person sitting across the desk from you so usually in a consultation or a telephone call, um, it can be as formal or informal as someone <laughs> right, may want right. it. Um, but we'll begin to gather information. Mm -hmm. So do you have children? Do you have okay. grandchildren? Do you have loved ones nearby? Um, what are your assets? What does your, you know, do you have bank accounts? Do you have real property? Mm -hmm. um, and also, who do you want to be in charge mm -hmm. of your estate while you're living, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, in charge of your, your affairs while you're living, should something mm -hmm. happen to you? Mm -hmm. And who would you want to be in charge when you pass okay. away? Oftentimes, um, it looks the same, like the people will use the same agents on everything, but sometimes it doesn't. So for instance, if we're doing a full estate plan, um, and, and you may have the lawyer or accountant child that you want mm -hmm. to be on your power of attorney uh -huh. because that's who would be making a legal or financial decision for you but then you have the nurse son or daughter or the medical uh -huh. son or daughter that you would put on your health care surrogate right. um, so the information that we really need is who do you want listed on these documents mm -hmm. who who do you feel comfortable is it or is it maybe a friend mm -hmm. or do you have no one and you right. want us to reach out and and do some of that care management case mm -hmm. management um, there's companies out there that provide services, um, and, and we can do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely who you want to be on your documents, that's important, who you want, uh, like we're talking about the trust, who you would want to be your trustee, and then of course, who are your beneficiaries? Who do you want to inherit from you when you pass away? Is it a family member, is it a friend, is it an organization? 
Um, so we often ask people, you know, think about the organizations you're members of or, or the, mm -hmm. you, the charities that you donate to. What is meaningful for you? Who do you want right. to, to have your funds when you're gone? Um, so we, we, and sometimes that takes people time. You yeah. know, they come into our office and these, they haven't thought about these things yet, and that's right. okay. We take this as slow or as fast as, as the client would want, um, but it's about thinking who, who do I want to take what I've worked so hard for all these years? Um, so those are kind of the, the, the things to be thinking about. You know, and you're, as you're talking about it, I was just gonna ask you, when you come to these decisions and you start to work through this, maybe that's one of the reasons we often put this stuff off because it feels like, like I have to make all of these decisions, but one of the things that you were just talking about is that it's okay if that process takes a little bit of time because I guess maybe first somebody has to sit down so that we even know the right questions we need to be thinking about. Right, right, and, and we have people that come in that you know it's more of a education uh -huh. consultation where we're saying this is what there is that we can offer you this is what you need this is what this is what the documents mean and people can be hesitant and that's okay that's okay we right. um, we're here to educate we mm -hmm. want we want you to understand the benefits of all of the documents right. and why they're needed we're not just pushing this stuff for some personal <laughs> agenda <laughs> no I, I, I was gonna say and in particular uh, Amy and your law firm uh, you guys have been very generous with your time you're always involved in uh, like a lot of community uh, where you'll do seminars and, and particularly I know that uh, over the years I've, I've heard Amy give talks about uh, VA planning, uh, VA aid and attendance planning and there's a lot of different things that the average person doesn't know and I wanted to ask you about this as we're talking about trust because I've also heard stories of people who will do go to all the trouble to make up the paperwork and so they'll think well I've got my whole trust it's all set up everything's done but then they don't quote, fund it or put the things into the trust, and that kind of negates the whole purpose, right? It does. So it's so unfortunate when we, and we see it because our office does probate as well, uh -huh. so we see it after people have passed where they uh -huh. had this trust and it wasn't properly funded, so it's almost like the trust was useless. You went to all the trouble and the expense of creating it while you were alive, right. but then not properly funded, it really does you no good. Um, and you're likely gonna find yourself in probate anyway. Um, but funding your trust is basically making sure your assets are titled in your trust name. So for instance, um, if I had the Tyler Runty Revocable Trust, mm -hmm. that would be the title on my bank accounts. Tyler okay. Runty, trustee of my trust. Um, or my, the deed to my home. That would be the way it would be, we, would be titled. So our office does do um, trust funding. So yeah. we help with trust funding if that's a service you would like us to provide. Um, because I think once people get over that hump of, okay, my documents are done, right. whew, okay, I can just sit back and yeah. I'm good now. The, you do have that little bit of homework right. of making sure your assets are titled correctly. And we oftentimes work with um, financial advisors or CPAs, whoever, to make sure that we're collaborating and coordinating to mm -hmm. make sure your assets are all titled correctly. Well, it does sound like it's pretty complex and that leads me to the topic, you know, I know, um, that boy will turn on the TV and we'll see commercials that encourage us, oh, you can do this, here's an online service, you can take care of all this stuff yourself. Or oftentimes you can go into like an office supply store and there'll be this, oh, here, do your, do your own uh, paperwork stuff. But to me that seems kind of dangerous because uh, so much of this uh, seems a little bit high stakes. Like if you get it wrong, it could really cost you money. Absolutely, you hit it on the head that if it if you get it wrong it's it's really it could be a problem it, or i shouldn't say it could be it will be a problem wow. um and very very costly so it, we, we want you to avoid that um we always say please don't print things offline that you mm -hmm. find on you know on the internet and and just assume that they're going to be legally accurate they're going to be executed with the proper formalities right. um you know certain documents need two witnesses and a notary and a lot of these documents you find online, uh, you know, it's just got a signature at the bottom where yeah. you sign, you think you're good, yeah. but that's not what Florida law requires. Wow. And they can also be very vague, um, not having the correct Florida statutory language in there, um, especially revolving around homestead. Florida has some um, particular homestead laws and our trusts um, speak to those. Okay. So when you get these ones offline, you 
or, you know, that might not be in there, which is going to be costly and it's just going to be a lot of paperwork and right. headache. You know, and that, that actually leads me to, a, to kind of a, like a corollary point. You know, we have the blessing of living here in Florida. And, and of course, uh, these programs, the Helping Seniors TV programs, we broadcast these locally here on Space Coast Government TV. But they're also available like on a YouTube channel. We have a Helping Seniors of Brevard YouTube channel. And then we also have a, a, a page on uh, Facebook, Helping Seniors of Brevard. And they have a service called uh, Facebook Watch. And so all of these uh, TV programs go there. So we will occasionally get calls, uh, not occasionally, I'd say actually more frequently, we'll get calls from relatives, like adult kids, uh, who have their mom or dad or uncle or aunt or somebody living in our area, but they're up in the Midwest or they're up in the Northeast and they're calling saying, hey, uh, I saw this and I'm curious about this. But then there's a lot of people who are down here that are snowbirds. And there's also a lot of people moving into our state. Our state is... Um, uh, it's almost like a magnet because everybody moves to Florida. And I was thinking like, what if you're a person that you had set stuff up, but maybe you spent your working years, you know, someplace up north. Does all that work when you get down here or do you need somebody to help you sort it out and look through? So we definitely say have an attorney look at it. So if you had all your documents done mm -hmm. in another state and you moved to Florida, um, absolutely you want to have some an attorney review it and make mm -hmm. sure that it's compliant with Florida laws and has the Florida statutes in there. If it doesn't, we can always amend it to include those. Mm -hmm. So we, we do that often. Um, like you say, with so many people moving to Florida, right. we do that very, very frequently where we'll review documents from another state and then um, just update them so that they're compliant with Florida law. So it's not, you know, a redo and all of that trust funding that you may have already done, uh -huh. hopefully already done, um, that's all fine. We don't have to touch that because we still use your same trust. So the name doesn't change. N none of the particulars change um, unless you want them to, of course, while mm -hmm. we're amending. If you want us to change um, that, those particulars, we can. But the name doesn't change, so you mm -hmm. don't have to unwind any of that trust funding. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not too complicated of a process. But we do say make sure you have an attorney review it because you don't want to, um, you know, a Ohio laws in your Florida, now Florida trust. Right. You know, because that, that to me is like a, a kind of a novice about this. It really makes sense. Right. Because you think you had everything buttoned up. And the, pro and the problem with all of this, right, is that the moment you need it to work right, it's not like you have an opportunity to do a do-over. <laughs> You're just stuck with whatever <laughs> right. you had, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah, you want to get it right. That's why, that's why we say, please don't print these things offline and, or yeah. have us review if you move here. Um, just because you want it to be right. It's, it's yeah. not worth the, the headaches that are on the back end if you don't have it right. Yeah, and I guess for the, so, so, so a takeaway for me for us talking about this today is that this conversation we're having about trust is far more applicable to, to all of us average folks that, are, that, are, that we're just trying to figure out to do the right things for our family. So it's not really just for folks that have, are high net worth individuals. I, I would imagine if you have a house and a bank account, it probably makes sense to at least have the visit and say, is this something I should be talking to you about? Yes, absolutely, yep. And then particularly, uh, I guess as I've heard this too, over time, you know, maybe you had documents done years ago uh, living up north, uh, you know, during your working years and you come down here and enjoy the sunshine of Florida, but maybe stuff that you had planned then has shifted. Somebody got married, somebody's no longer in the picture, whatever kinds, of, you, you probably run into a lot of that too. We do, and it's so nice when people, you know, get their dusty estate planning documents <laughs> out and review them right. um, because it's not, you know, necessarily the funnest read, right. but um, it is necessary. So every, we, we tell people, um, when you leave our office, please don't forget about us. You know, every right. few years, get your documents out and review them to make sure the names are all still accurate. Um, things have changed, yeah. you know, have things changed? Do you need updates? Right. And your, your documents can be so particular to the point of, you know, you want um, your son to inherit, but you want him only to receive $1,000 a month for oh, wow. the rest of his life or whatever. The, right. Or maybe you want drug tests or you want him to have completed college before he gets a lump sum. Some of those things over time are gonna change. If he's already wow. graduated college, then that's, 
you know, a moot right. point at this, you know. So we definitely say, take them yeah. out, look at them, see if anything needs to be changed. And that's that's not a complex thing either. We can make whatever changes are necessary. Wow, it's very, it's very encouraging. And I want to thank you for kind of having broken this down in a way that we can access. You guys, I, again, through the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen, you guys really take a lot of time. If somebody wants to look at uh, a website, I know you guys have a website and you have a lot of resources there. Um, that are useful. How do people find you guys online? Yes, so the number is 321-345-5945. That's our phone mm -hmm. number. And then online would be amybvanfossen.com. Um, we do hold free seminars as well, so you can call our office to schedule yeah. for one of those. Yeah, and to me, it sounds like a really good way to kind of like uh, put your toe in the water. And I think as you get more comfortable with some of the terminology, it's going to encourage you to take the next step to make sure that you really are protecting your family. And it's almost like it's a peace of mind thing that you do for your loved ones, right? Absolutely. Yes. People all the time are saying, I just don't want this to be a problem for my kids, which is wonderful. Yeah. And, and likewise for the kids, you know, push your, push your parents or prompt them to get this done um, just so it's, it's easier for everyone. Yeah. Everybody knows what, you know, how you want it to roll. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, that's good. So thank you, uh, Tyler Runty with the law office, uh, attorney with the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen, uh, kind of uh, your expertise is, is wills and trust. And uh, so again, uh, real quickly, the phone number one more time if somebody wants to call. Sure, 321-345-5945. Uh, and the, the website is amybvanfossen.com. All right. Well, thank you, viewer, for joining us on today's edition of Helping Seniors TV. Uh, you can find all these programs archived on the uh, helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. You'll find lots of good resources to help you develop your own aging plan. Let's get your ducks in a row. I'm Kerry Fink on behalf of Helping Seniors, the organization, Helping Seniors TV. And so on behalf of Joe Steckler, our president and founder, our entire team, volunteers, staff team, everybody, thank you for joining us today on Helping Seniors. I'm Joe Steckler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Burrard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.